So congratulations if you just ended up picking up your MetaQuest Pro. This is a very, very useful VR headset. It's powerful, it has pretty much everything you'd ever want, and it's very expensive too. So if you're new to VR, if you're new to the MetaQuest you know, experience, hopefully this little breakdown will show you exactly what you're working with. But like I said, this is a very, very expensive. This is probably one of the best VR headsets you can buy. So because of that, this thing is going to be useful for many, many years to come. So definitely, definitely keep that in mind. Now Meta is spending a bunch of money on the metaverse, so I'm sure these things are going to be you know, lasting for a very long time too. Now this thing is very, very different than what the standard MetaQuest or the MetaQuest 2 experience is. So the concept is kind of the same though. So you will have the headset within the box and you will also have the two controllers within the box as well. Now these are a little different than what we're working with before on the MetaQuest 2. So I will go ahead and show you a little quick breakdown of the controllers, but within the box you will also have not only a charging cable, but you will also have the charging dock as well. So you should have one of these within the box. This is basically how you can charge your controllers. You can charge the headset without the dock, but to charge your controllers, you will have to pretty much have this dock. I'm sure there's going to be some other ways to charge it too, but for the you know, most part, that's how to do it. And I'll go ahead and show you how to you know, kind of set that up as well. Now within the headset itself, if we go and kind of do a quick you know, look around, you basically see on the front of the headset, we have our little... We have our little setup right here. So we have our cameras right on this specific part of the sensor. This is just like a little glass film. So just be very, very careful of not breaking this or dropping this on the front because this is glass. So this will probably end up breaking. On the top, we don't really have anything except for our little like little things we can change, which I'll show you in a second. The bottom of the headset though is what's really, really important. So if I go and swing this around, if we go ahead and zoom in, Within the top portion of our headset, we will have two different things. So we'll have two different ports right here. We will also have our volume down and volume up button on the left side. So we have two different buttons. So this is the bottom of the controller, remember that. On the right side, we will have our power button right there. So we can go ahead and quickly power on or power off our headset completely if we wanna go that direction. We also have these two little ports right here, which allow us to pretty much connect to that dock, which I showed you earlier to charge this headset. And that is that. We have a little wire that's sticking out at the bottom here, I'm not too sure why. And we also have just a little padding on the back. And that is it from a sheer, you know, button standpoint. However, there are three other things that you will need to know of your headset. One, if we look at the top portion of our headset, there are two different circles. So one is right here and the other one is right there. So these will allow you to kind of configure your setup of your headset to your specific head. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I put this on, it did pull some of my hair, so keep that in mind. So I would probably recommend if you're somebody who has super long hair, you may wanna go ahead and just kind of set it up beforehand or loosen it up. So you can do that by scrolling this circle one way or another. Now you can see for me moving the circle, it's going through and it's actually expanding and unspanding it. So that is actually a really cool thing. You can see it's making it basically, you know, it's making it longer or shorter. I would probably recommend making it as long as possible before you actually put it on your head and then put it on your head, then kind of scroll this one in. That's the first thing I'd recommend doing. Now, another circle we have is right here. It's a little bit smaller to see and you can really only change it from here, but this will un kind of do the same thing too, but you can see it'll make it a little bit tighter of a fit. If you scroll it this way, if you scroll it this way, it's not as big of a difference as this back circle, but you can see you can kind of do the same thing too. So it's making it just a little bit closer or tighter of a fit on the front. Now, the other thing is with the bottom. So if we go ahead and kind of scroll it to the bottom, if you can see right here, we do have our little like circle things. These are basically our goggles where we're going to go ahead and look through. Now, these can also be changed up a little bit. So you can go ahead and kind of just grab one of these circles and kind of push them closer or push them further from each other, as you guys can see. So this can also give you a little bit of a better fit, whether you're going through and you're actually looking through them or not. This can also give you a little bit of a better experience. So I wouldn't go and like, you know, put your hands on any of the sensors or glasses. You can grab them on the side as well as the front. I would avoid kind of touching any of the camera. There's cameras all over this thing. I wouldn't recommend like glossing your fingers in the like glass or on the front, but that gives you a quick breakdown of the of this specific headset itself. But like I mentioned, there is more than meets the eye. Next up, we have the controllers. So as I mentioned, these are different than what we had before on the Oculus, you know, Quest headset 2 or the Meta Quest 2. So you can see these controllers no longer have the circular ring around it. So I do have the controller from before and you can see we had this circle thing. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it was kind of weird. Now that is removed with this headset. 
So these controllers are much better in my opinion, but we also no longer have a way to replace the battery, at least natively, within this headset. So we do charge it via the dock that I showed you in a second, but the button layout is pretty much the same. You can pretty much do the exact same thing within them. Now I'll go and show you the dock because this is very important. So with the dock, you can charge up the controllers and the headset at the same time. So there's a USB-C port at the back of this dock, and also I forgot to take the sticker off, but it shows you exactly how to basically, you know, charge this dock. You go ahead and put the controllers in first, and you can put the headset in after, or you can charge the headset and or controllers separately. It doesn't matter. I'm going to take this off, and then you basically have that information at the bottom. Now, the basic way to set up this specific dock and, and connect the controllers is you want to have the dock here, make sure it's plugged in. You can set the right controller. There's this little circular indent right here. You want to go ahead and put one side on and have to turn this around. You want to go ahead and put this side and connect it to the bottom portion of this side. So it'll go ahead and kind of connect like here. You want to go and grab the other controller and do the exact same thing on this side. What you want to do is you want to grab this little indent right here and you want to go ahead and kind of match it in to this specific side of the dock. So you can go ahead and pretty much just, it's kind of a tight fit. It might look like it's not fitting right, but it is kind of like a work in progress. But you should be able to see that halfway through as soon as you kind of plug it in. There's this little indent and half line right there. So you should be able to go ahead and grab this side too and go and put it in right there. So they kind of connect to one another. They're kind of like side by side. So that is how you put the controllers up. Now the headset itself is very easy. It's pretty much just you just kind of like plug it in right there and you should be able to see that the dock will now go ahead and be configured it'll be set up and that is that that is basically how you go ahead and go through and just charge up your headset so that is a very basic workaround it, again you can charge up your headset separately because it does have a USB-C port so if you look to the side it's on the left side of our specific headset you should be able to see that USB-C port so this port is great because you can go ahead and charge up your specific headset which is great so you can just charge up this thing right there but it's also really cool because you do have the ability of using the same USB-C port within the dock itself. So that is a really awesome thing you can do as well. Now, that is basically a quick breakdown of the, you know, MetaQuest Pro headset. Again, it's a very, very basic understanding. There's really not too much else going on with it. Now, if you aren't super familiar with the Meta... Now, if you're not super familiar with how to use like the MetaQuest software or anything like that, you know, as soon as you boot it up, the initial process is very basic, but I'll go ahead and, you know, play a little bit of a video that I made earlier on how to use a MetaQuest 2, and it's pretty much the same UI and same everything, so I'll go ahead and put that over this video right now, so you can kind of get a quick understanding of how to use that specific software. Now, as you can see, you can see my Oculus screen right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate to you the same exact way I would do it on my screen, as well as with the controllers. So the first thing you want to do is grab your controller while the Oculus is set up. So this is after the setup process. So now you should be able to see exactly what I'm seeing. And you can see I'm sticking my controller out. You can see that it's also moving this wand around too. So like I mentioned, these are the buttons that you typically normally, you know, kind of mess around with. And you should still be able to see. So I have to keep breaking it up. Pretty much the basic layout of this menu is you'll have your name up here. You can go and kind of configure your settings around a little bit. Up here, you'll have your preferences. So you can go ahead and click on preferences right here and kind of maneuver through different things you're into. And this is a great way of seeing what other apps and stuff that are available with an Oculus. Now if, you want, now, if you ever want to go back on your Oculus, you can go and click this B button right here on the controller, and it'll go and take you back, just like how I did it right here. And I may have been covering up the menu the first off. Now, here you'll pretty much see some recommended apps that you'll have every once in a while. So you can go and download them, like Beat Saber and all these different applications, which are really cool. Now, you can maneuver through this menu by going down and up on your joystick little thing option right here. So you can see on my joystick, I'm going up and down. It'll go ahead and move these options up and down too, which is really cool. Now on the left side, you'll have your little explore panel. So you can go ahead and explore different apps. You can go and move your, you know, from your apps. So if you have different apps that you have, you can go and move from them. Some entertainment apps, some, some of your friends activities and different things like this if you have your friends on Facebook and some saved options as well. So that's pretty much it for this option. It's nothing super crazy. You can go ahead and if you ever want to search for anything, you can click on the top and you can search for things too, like free games and different things like that. Now at the bottom, you'll go ahead and see that you actually have some options down here. Now I have my other controller right here and you can see that and you and it's pretty cool because you can see the controllers in my hands and it's actually a really cool thing. It's kind of trippy at first, but it's just a really awesome thing. Now down here, you'll be able to see a couple of more options. So right here, you can go and if you click on it, you can go and configure. I don't know why there's so many lines here. Now in this option, in this quick toggle, you can go ahead and actually click on 
you can go and configure your sound up here. You can go and configure your brightness up here. You can also hop into your settings right here. And these are a bunch of different options that you should go ahead and kind of, you know, get used to seeing. So up here, you can click on system. If you have any updates or anything, you can click there. If you want to configure your Wi-Fi, your boundary, when you first set it up, you'll understand what that is. Some different personalization settings, your accounts, if you want to add accounts, configure your notifications from your phone and all that stuff, different app permissions, storage, you know, how much storage it has 128 gigs built in your hands and your different controllers that you have, accessibility options, privacy options, security options, and experimental options as well. And again, if you ever wanna go out, you can go and click this B button right here, and it'll go and take you back. Now in this case, if you ever wanna hop back here, you can go and click here, and it'll take you back into your quick settings. Now here, you can go and configure your you know, Wi-Fi options as well, your guardian room scale, and a couple of different quick toggles down here. Now these can be configured as far as I know, so you can go and you know, reset your view, you can turn on and off your microphone, you can increase your night, you can turn on night display, you can turn on do not disturb, you can go and do some voice commands, you can also report a problem, and you can also, you can also pass through home, which is really cool. Now we can go and hop out a quick toggle like here, and here pretty much just gives you back your profile and different notifications as well. Now here are some different applications. Now you have your internet, now you have your explore option here, your store, your people, and your sharing options as well. So at this point, if everything looks good, you can also see all of your applications here by clicking on apps and you will see all the apps that you have available. So if you download any games or you have any options, you can go and maneuver through them here. And again, I'm pretty much moving my controller like this. So if you ever want to do anything, again, it's like a Wii remote, you're moving your controller. Now at this point, if you want to open up your TV, you can go through here. Now these are tons of different apps that you can go and download. These aren't all of them. But a cool thing is, is under, you know, browser. So if you go and click on browser right here, you can pretty much see that is a full fledged internet browser. So here you can go and use your internet and everything like that if you want to. So if we go to Google right here, you can go and have a full on Google browser, which is so cool. So now you can go and search up if you want to. So if we, you know, 18 Verizon, you know, 5G rollout, whatever. And it's a full fledged internet browser, which is so cool. So you can go on any website that you want to. And again, everything that I'm doing isn't crazy. You should be able to do this for sure. Now, if you ever want to exit out of something, you can go and exit out of application here, or you can minimize the app. So if you click minimize, look what happens. It'll go ahead and minimize it, and you might be wondering, wait, where do I go? Well, at the bottom, like I mentioned, this is pretty much your dock. So if you want to go back to your internet browser, you can go and open it right here, and it'll come back open. You can also exit out of it, and look, remember this little toggle that we had here? If we click X, it's going to exit out, and if it's not going to be here anymore. Now you can go back to your explore page here. This is where the familiarity is. You can also go back into your apps right here. You can open up something else if you want to. So let's say we want to go back to our, you know, settings. For example, we can click on settings. It'll come straight here. We can also go ahead and click here and we can go and click on our browser and we can go ahead and open up our browser again. So it may take a second, you know, it usually takes a little bit of time to load. And there you go. You're back into your browser. You can go and click on these three options here. You can go and go back, forward, refresh the page. And if any time you have any questions or anything, you can always search them up straight into your internet browser as well. So if you want to say how, this usually take a long time for these things. So you can go and type in as however you want to, go and click search, and then you can pretty much move on from there. So if you ever want to exit out of an app, you can go look here. And then pretty much if we go and take this Oculus off our headset, you can see it'll go and turn off on my phone display. Now that you just watched that, you should basically now have a decent understanding of how to use your MetaQuest Pro. Again, this is a very, very, good headset it's going to be lasting for a very long amount of time and hopefully you have a great time using it again it's a work in progress so i'm sure meta is going to spend a lot of money on fixing a lot of things that you may have issues with now but that is basically it as long as you keep your headset up to date keep it in good condition you should have a really really good experience with this headset if you have any other thoughts or questions please let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that me so much but definitely hit that subscribe button more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then